Hello everyone, this is Akio from the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. I am a co-author of this book, and the book is about jewelry 3D modeling using Rhino and Grasshopper. In this channel, Eva and I are introducing many unique jewelry modeling techniques. The book is available at Amazon website in your country. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a bypass ring in Rhino 8. Let's get started. This is a 6mm round stone, and I'm going to make a setting first. I have a curb here at the girdle. I'm going to bring it down. And scale a little bit and extrude it. I can adjust the height later. I'm going to make it something like this. Okay. And go to the top viewport. I'm going to make a circle from zero, about the size of the table. Uh, where's my curb? So I'm going to make a hole, grab this line with the shift for the both side. Okay. And then I will chamfer this edge. Solid tool, chamfer edge. Uh, let me try 0.6 millimeter. Okay, yeah, that looks okay now. Uh, maybe I wanted to taper a little bit. So control shift with a gumball and grab the scale handle and taper a little with a shift. Okay, now I'm going to change the layer to the image layer and turn off the setting and done. And I'm going to change to front viewport. Okay, then a picture frame command to bring in the external image. Surface tool, picture frame. It said add a picture playing on a toolbar. And I'm going to pull the image right here in a front viewport. Okay, then uh, we will scale this image. This ring I'm going to make size 7, so diameter is 17.35. And I'm going to trace this inner diameter of the image. So transform, orient two points, and select the image, scale 3D, reference point one and two, and target point, target point one and two. Here we go. Okay, I need this height, 3.8 millimeter, uh, top of the ring. So I'm going to make line of the 3.8. So it's a little different from the original picture, but uh, in order to accommodate the six millimeter stone, the shank has to be come up right here. Another line from the bottom. I need 1.7 millimeter. Okay, then Create an ellipse using circle diameter command. 
start of diameter and end of the diameter. Okay, then I will scale this oval using a gumball. The scale 1D to X direction. You can open up the top uh, just a little bit and split this image with a single line. Okay. Then I'm going to place this top image in a top viewport. Okay, so remap, C plane, and select this image and click. Click in the viewport with the target C plane is top. Then enter. Okay, right here. Okay, then um, stone is a six millimeter, so I'm going to make a six millimeter circle. I'm going to trace this image using a circle diameter command. And then orient two points again. Orient two points. This image. One, two, and target point. And uh, one and two. Here we go. Okay, I would delete this circle. I will create the extrusion on a top construction plane and a flow on this ring curve. I will need a base curve which matches the length of this ring curve. So line command, single line command, start of line, zero, enter, and end of the line. I would like to measure this curve on the outside so length command is my shortcut L, enter. Select the curve to measure and enter. So whatever the length is, this straight line and this ring curve are exactly the same length. And I will move this straight line from midpoint to zero. Okay, then go to top viewport, turn on the stone, and turn on the image. Okay, so I am going to trace this shank right now. Um, make sure project is on, and I will use this control point curve. Okay, and uh, this end of the curve is a bottom of the ring, so I don't want to um, have this chunk to the bottom. I would say up to here, and I want to make a line. Okay, then continue to draw finishing the outline of the shank and then I would disable the object snap. Okay. And then turn on the object snap again and I make an arc. Close this shank curve.
Okay. Then I will trim this curve. Okay, then um, join it. Okay, looks good. Okay, now turn off the stone and I'm going to make an extrusion. I would take this curve and extrude down four millimeter. Here we go. Okay. Then, and we will flow. So before we flow, we have to check the direction of the curve. So this direction command. And yeah, I wanted to run this curve right to left. So I will flip it. And what about this one? Yeah, this one is good. So throwing that direction. OK. Then float on curve command. Select the object to flow. Enter. Base curve. I click this side of the curve. And I will click the matching end. Here we go. All right. So this is a ring layer. And I turn off the extrusion layer. Okay, then I'm going to rotate it. Rotate from the center, copy yes, and 180 degrees. Here we go. All right. And then we're going to cut out. So I'm going to use a gumball, grab this uh, line for the cut with the shift for the both side. Okay, it's good. Let me grab this stone. Be with a setting. And here's a setting. And I will use a cut gumball. Okay. All right. You can make this setting a little thinner if you like. Do face border command to extract the sweep shape. I need to delete this surface. Then sweep to rail. First rail, second rail, and the sweep shape. Enter. And I'm moving the seam in the middle. And OK. All right, so turn off the all oh, the unnecessary curves and I will turn off the setting too. Okay, and then I wanted to fill the edges. Fill the edges probably 0.2 millimeter. See if it works. Okay, I forgot to join it, so join those shanks. And we have a closed solid poly surface. Then bring back the setting and the round stone. And the burial union. The setting and uh, 
das Schenk. Okay. I will show you how to make this bypass ring with subtitle in my next video. Please subscribe and smash the like button if you found this video helpful. And if you have some requests for us to create a specific type of model, please leave it in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.